people don't know that much about Orthodoxy in America and uh, even less about the Celtic Orthodox Church. Some people say it's a legend. Uh, other people believe it's part of tradition. I am one that believes it's tradition that St. Joseph of Arimathea, who took Christ down from the cross, he was a tin merchant and used to travel through Gaul or France today and go to England. And he was a follower of Christ. He became a bishop of the early church and he built the first church on the British Isles in the year 37. It was an independent church. All of the churches had local bishops and were united spiritually, but independent. But then with time, as the Roman church grew, it absorbed the Celtic church into itself. From about the 11th or 12th century, we were absorbed by the Roman church. But then to re-become what we were in our origins, the Syriac Orthodox Church consecrated two bishops for us. Uh, one of the consecrating bishops is a saint, Saint uh, Gregory of Parumala. And uh, from these two consecrations, the beginnings of the renewal of the Celtic Orthodox Church took place. It is of apostolic origin. It's a sacramental church. We have the sacraments, the seven sacraments, which the Protestants don't mostly have. As far as the Roman Church is concerned, we share basically everything that they have because the Roman Church and the Orthodox Church were one church up until the 11th century, so that necessarily there is a profound link and bond with them. Where we may differ are things like the discussion of the filioque or the question of papal infallibility. The thing is, we say Celtic Orthodox Church but it's not in the same spirit as we would say the Russian Orthodox Church or the Greek Orthodox Church or the Romanian or Serbian Orthodox Church. We are not an ethnocentric church. When we say Celtic, it doesn't mean it's only meant for the Irish or the Scots or the Welsh and so forth. It just happened to have been born in those lands. But the spirit of the church is what we give most importance to so that you can be of German extraction, you can be of Scottish extraction, you can be of Italian extraction and so forth, and you are very much at home in the Celtic Orthodox Church because it's the spirit of the church and, and its beliefs, of course, its faith, that are the key things for us here. Saint Tugduo, went to a place at Saint Dole in France. Uh, he had healed a woman uh, who was going blind, lost her eyesight, and the family gave him to choose one of three properties they would give him. And he chose what seemed to be uh, the worst one, out in a swamp, far from everything. But he says, here, I feel the Holy Presence. And so he started living there as a hermit. I believe that the Lord sends souls to the place where they are going to receive consolation. It's not publicity that brings people here. I didn't choose his church. He led me here and he prepared me in advance. The mission from the very start was to take Christ to the people. Our mission is not to convert people by telling them this is the truth and giving them a booklet. But it is to first love them as they are. It's love that touches the heart and it opens us, with the grace of the Holy Spirit, of course, to the desire to build something together. You could go to an Orthodox church that has a polyphonic chant and a grandiose celebration of the liturgy and a church building that is absolutely magnificent, but it's so much more than that. 
I believe that the people who come here, for example, and we are rather isolated, it is a monastery out in the country. The cities are not so far away, but it takes a great effort to get here. They come here because they're called. In the end, they became members, not because it was the Celtic Orthodox Church. They came here because they felt they were at home. But more importantly, they found the Lord here. Our sister churches, they have had such ordeals in their histories, so many divisions, so many wounds, so many things that makes communion between them impossible today. In restoring our church, God gave us back what our church had at the height of her glory and splendor. The world today, the scientific world, rushed and consumerist, considers man to be a psyche and doesn't want to acknowledge the transcendent nature of the human being. That is to say, where we find the true person is where we find that man is made in the image and likeness of God. Every church should be a response to the egocentrism that we find in the world today. It is not only for the Celtic Orthodox Church to teach this. People today have become so much idolaters of money and self-feeling, and they interpret even morality the way they feel like doing it. We are all sinners. We all have limits. We are all egocentric. But by divine graces, God has given us the ability to love each other just as we are. From there, he has also given us the ability to be transformed. The Celtic Orthodox Church is, I think, the perfect antidote to the spirit of, of wealth and, and self-service today. God always impresses us with the grandeur of his work, and it will continue to grow, I'm sure. It's still a very humble origin, but it is growing.